tell uh, they were getting ready to release the PW2 because they wanted to get the digital pre-distortion hook as part of their uh, marketing tool uh, to buy the, uh, the PW2 amplifier, which was a one kilowatt uh, LD mod device uh, amplifier. And uh, so their, their sole marketing was based on the digital pre-distortion and all this kind of stuff. And so, so that failed uh, in their deployment. because they're losing uh, this other capability and uh, anyway so so anyway to make a long story short uh, i got fed up with it and i'm gonna i'm leaning towards flux right in now wow well, i don't blame you yeah it's just the typical icon no one you know uh, the, 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 you know ray novak people they say well we don't have any say or Customer service is uh, uh, is the worst. You go over to somebody like KKM uh, outside of uh, and they're in Florida with the Mercury Lux. Yeah, those people will send over backwards. And not only that, uh, when your radio craps out, if it does, very rare, very rare, uh, they pay for shipping both ways. Uh, who does that? KM because they have an excellent customer service. Yeah, and they make a good product and they stand behind the product. So, yeah. I know. That, that, that's really the problem. I don't know. I, I don't know that Yesu is any better, to be honest with you. Um, it seems like after COVID, uh, Yesu and ICOM both, the customer service has just been a skeleton crew. And it doesn't make any sense, you know, because. Uh, ICOM, you know, they're, they're, they're selling so many radios. I mean, they're, they're extremely profitable. I, I just don't understand why they can't answer the damn phone. I mean, did you... I have a 7800, and I was missing the uh, the feet that, that rise the front of the radio. They weren't in the box. And, man, I, it, it took me two months to get those feet, Kevin. I'm, I'm, I'm not even kidding you. I, I had to, to work for two months to get those feet ordered. And when I finally finally got the guy to call me, because Bram told me to email him or something, the guy finally called me while I was in the grocery store, and I saw it said, I call America. I stopped what I was doing, answered the phone. He said, yeah, we got those, blah, 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 okay, yep. Well, then the guy says, oh, I, don't, I can't sell anything. I have to turn this order into the sales department, and they'll call you within a couple of weeks. So finally, that's what happened. A lady called, got my money. Then, uh, man, I think it was another month, the, uh, the box showed up, and guess what? There was one foot inside. Yeah, that, that's the way they operate. You know, they, they, you wonder if, uh, if they, 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 they're, they're, when, they, when they have their uh, 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 employment, uh, what do they call those things? Where they go out? look for employees and self fairs and uh, uh, job fairs, yeah, job fairs. Do they go to the local mental institution or something to get their employees? Well, they gave me hell when I had a 7300 that the USB went out on, and it was all my fault, no matter what, and blah, 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 and the guy was just a complete prick on the phone. Yeah, that's the way they are. Yeah, it, it, it's all part of the, you know, it's not my fault. And I, I, I've experienced that myself, right? Uh, you know, so what you have to do is you have to kind of build a mechanism where you just eliminate them and uh, figure out, you know, work around and things like that and make it less painful. Did you ever have your display go out on yours? Oh, yeah, I can tell you the whole, uh, the whole history. Matter of fact, I, I think it was the, uh, one of the very few people that actually wrote a letter to the CEO of ICOM, and boy, did that stir up a lot of problems, and boy, I had uh, the ICOM fanboys uh, send me nasty emails, uh, saying I don't understand the Japanese culture, and uh, this, that, and the other, and, but uh, let me tell you, from one uh, person, 
as he moved the mahogany row to another, he knew exactly what I was saying in the letter, the personal letter to him and his board. And I wrote not only the uh, CEO, but to the entire board. And uh, we had a, a real nice high-level discussion about uh, how terrible it was the way the folks underneath them uh, were uh, you know, handling the situation to include Ray Novak. Yeah, I mean, you pay $3,500 plus tax for a radio, and then the display goes out. I mean, like, what the hell? Yeah, I, I spent $4,000. Uh, I, I was an early adopter. Yes, I'll just tell you the short story what happened. Okay, so so uh, the supplier for the display uh, was having financial problems. That's uh, the way I understood it, the way it was explained to me. And uh, uh, so they, 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 they stopped paying uh, some of their employees, and the employees got really pissed off because they were being promised that they were going to be paid and, and uh, taken care of and all that. So morale went down. So uh, then the quality of the manufacturing of those displays went to hell in a handbasket. Uh, but they would still produce some, um, and uh, they met their quota with ICOM. ICOM uh, buys in large quantities. And so what they were doing with their warranty, this is where I nailed them. Uh, they said, oh, yeah, we stand behind our product, and uh, we'll replace it free of charge, whether you're in warranty or out of warranty. If your display goes bad, we're going to replace it free of charge. You just have to pay for shipping one way. So people set their uh, 76 cents into the display replacement, and uh, what they did is they reached into the barrel of displays that came from the same lot, the same manufacturer. <laughs> so they still had the, the, the so-called quality defects that were latent uh, in the uh, displays they were replacing the bad displays. So they were replacing the bad displays with more bad displays. So people would get to the displays and go, oh, it's good again. It's just the way it was when I first bought my radio uh, three months ago or four months ago. And then all of a sudden, uh, three months, four months goes by, the radio's going uh, bad again during the uh, image retention. So after about the third time of sending the radio back for a display, a new display, and uh, having it go bad again for the third time, that was when the whole system collapsed. Yeah, I've, I've heard of people having them three, four times, and it's just like, well, the 7300 display doesn't go out. Why does the 7610 go out? Oh, because they bought those uh, in thousands of quantities uh, years prior. So uh, that's when the company uh, that were providing the displays were solvent. They weren't having problems playing their employees. Yep, I figured it was something like that. And it's just really sad, but when you call ICOM and you have a problem, they're just really, I don't know who, it's the same guy every time. He's just really rude. And you know, he told me uh, about my 7300. He's like, "Well, what did you, what kind of antenna do you have? Oh, you have a loop antenna. Oh, you, you, you've got RF. We don't cover RF." Yeah. Well. Oh well. Yeah. That's uh, that's really unfortunate that they uh, they have uh, the morons up there and uh, <laughs> march. I deal with them. I don't deal with them anymore. It's just a waste of time. I won't buy a brand new ICOM. I, I like some of my old ones, uh, but uh, I've got a brand new Yaesu 710. And I've had to call Yaesu a couple of times just for questions, and they've been really good to me on the phone. So, um, I and I called recently because I bought my 710 in November, and I wanted to know, okay, uh, what, what way should I hook up the display so that I don't blow out the video card in this thing? You know, and they, the guy was very helpful. DX Engineering was giving me the analogy of, of buying a new car and, and uh, you know, having, uh, you know, the same kind of unrealistic expectations uh, placed on a brand new car that, uh, that you're trying to place on a, uh, on a radio, ham radio manufacturer. And uh, so tell me a new car that hasn't had problems uh, coming off the line, you know, that kind of stuff. And they did, they just go... They just go uh, way out of their way to uh, uh, diminish you, treat you like crap. Uh, the whole 
it's, uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's just no way to run a company, I'll tell you that. I, I haven't bought anything from the engineering since, and uh, I, I would have uh, if I was treated half fair. I, I just called them up and asked them a question. I said, hey, I got this problem on my uh, brand new radio I just bought from you guys, the 7610, and I said, the display, half the display is, is shot, you know? And, uh, oh, 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 no, we don't, we, we don't know anything about that. Uh, you, you, you can't, you know, we're, we're the wrong people you should be calling. And, uh, you know, they, they wanted to distance themselves from it. Yeah, that's what HRO did when I called them about the 7300. It was four months old, okay? Regardless of whether or not I'm running a loop antenna and doing FT8 or whatever the hell, the USB port on the back of the radio internally in the radio is not shielded from RF. That's not my fault, okay? You're using a radio. It spits RF out the back of it. You know I mean? Shouldn't the damn thing be shielded? Yeah, well, you know, I don't, I don't know about that specifically, uh... Well, the guy wanted to argue with me, and he said, well, because of the type of antenna that you have, I guarantee you have RF in your shack, and that's what ruined your radio. We don't cover RF damage, but if you want to send it in, we'll, we'll look at it, and we'll, we'll try and fix it, and we'll charge you for the money. I said, dude, the thing's four months old. I didn't do anything wrong to it. You know? Uh, oh, no, no, we, we, we can't cover that. I said, you got to be kidding me. I said, I'm never going to buy anything from you again. Like I the same guy. He, um, I've, I've talked to him a couple of times, and it was like the same treatment. Now, I have a 756 Pro over here. It had a broken knob on it, a PBT control or something like that. It's a dual pot. I needed to order that thing. You know, they charged me $25 shipping with no tracking for this stupid thing, and the thing was like $4. So, and then, like Clark's experience, it took me like two months and they email you, and then you have to give them this credit card through the email, and you don't even know if like you've ordered it or not, you know. And then, and then, uh, then you eventually you get a confirmation email. Yeah, I remember ordering a part for uh, my Icon radio. It took four months to get it. It was it took a long time. I've got a 746 Pro, a 756 Pro, and then I, I bought the 751A recently. But, like, I got rid of the, the I have had two 7300s. I got rid of them, and, you know, I'm done. I, I, I like that radio. I like the 7610, but, like, you know, I just, I don't trust anything that they make. And I, I know they're not going to take care of me if there's a problem. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, customer service is uh, critically important. Between a uh, uh, a uh, educated consumer versus a fanboy, you know, like a fanboy, I think that's the difference. Clark had the finals go out on his little Yesu, and they uh, had that thing done in a couple of weeks, and hardly cha charged him anything. It was like hundred and thirty dollars round trip. That's a smoking deal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this video never works better. I, I, it, it, I, I never, that thing was always out of alignment, and it just, I was, I don't know. I got that radio back. They said, yep, the alignment, uh, we did the alignment and replaced the finals. It's good to go. I paid the bill. It showed up. It was absolutely perfect. It, it did 100, 105 watts on every single band, perfectly in alignment. I was like, damn. Sorry about that, Clark. Tell, tell them about the alignment part, Clark. That's where you guys doubled at. Well, the, the radio was never in proper alignment um, for years. It, it had different out, power output on every different band. And uh, I guess they just got good at it or some tech over there figured out how to do them. 
But, you know, when I got the radio back, it was not only fixed, it was uh, full power on every band. It felt like getting a, a D model Bram and just sending it to him. Uh, just, just because. Yeah, I, I paid a hundred dollars just just to line the thing. Well, what what radio was there? Uh, my little 450 D A S U or 450. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I know when the Icon was having that problem, uh, it was the uh, the drive level was uh, uh, was not was not set uh, at the proper level. Oh, I know. This, this, this thing, I, I I attempted to align it myself. Um, but it's, it's a convoluted procedure. You have to have a 16 ohm dummy load, not 50, for whatever reason, 16 ohm. And you have to go into the menu and it's got reverse ALC. Uh, I, it's, it's really weird. It's got gain, PX gain for every band and then reverse ALC. And if you don't set that right, what happens is the, the time to full power is, is slow. So, like, if you key it up, it's like 20 watts, but by the time you get to, like, the third word, it's 50 watts, and then maybe, like, the fourth word that you speak, it's 100 watts. It's not instant. Um, and AM, it was useless. The, the AM would backswing. Um, I got the radio back. I put it on the bench, plugged it into my, uh, my 1200 Super S station monitor, it was exactly 100 watts on every single band, 100, 105 watts, and AM worked perfectly. All of a sudden, AM works on it. It was 25 watts carrier, 100 PEP. It sounded beautiful. I thought, what the hell? Hey, guys, KK7 TV. Hey, Randy. Howdy. Howdy, duty. What's going on, Randy? Uh, I'm just uh, doing homework, sitting here listening. The belly aching and uh, just thinking. Well, we should just send the radio to you. We wouldn't have had no problem. No, I don't do him anymore. I'm sorry. I want to go get a hold of that guy. Say, hey man, uh, I need that 7300 back. Randy's going to take care of it. You know, they were never able uh, to. Uh, um, uh, Scott Malcolm was never able to find the the parts to fix that USB because I guess Icom changed it a bunch of times. Oh, that's too bad. My friend Jim ended up with the radio, and he was using it for AM, and then he cooked the finals on it, too. How could he cook the finals on AM? Because it's only pushing 25 watts or something like that. I, I'm not really sure. He he lived over there, down there um, in the, uh, Buckeye, and he was... Uh, using some weird antenna in the backyard, you know, and stuff like that. And that's the only thing I can think of is maybe something was up with the antenna. Yeah, the thing's designed, if it sees anything above 3.1, it's going to start folding back to dry. So, yeah, then something else. He might, he might have dropped it or it was in the sunlight too long. Well, I guess Scott Malcolm told him, that the Achilles heel on the 7300 is that it can get RF into it either through the microphone connector, the power cord, or any other thing that plugs into the back and it can get into the ALC circuit and cause it to run away and that will uh, cause problems. Everybody was end fed to a bunch of common modes. Right, exactly, and that's what he had over there, uh, Clark. He had this experimental uh, antenna like that. You know, you get a cheap radio like that, they get a cheap antenna, they get it 20 feet in the air. I hear them on the bands. Uh, I got my 7300 and infant, and I don't know what's going on. When I talk on the hands mic, uh, it burns my lip. Yeah, you know, that, that could be a problem. Yeah, so that thing has got a lot of protection built in, so I'm, I'm really surprised. Uh, uh, must have really some bad stuff getting in that radio. Apparently, uh, they've they've repaired quite a few of them. Um, usually, it's guys doing FT8 on them. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess the uh, it's not like the 7610 with the temperature. You know, it, it monitors temperature and the voltage and everything. Well, there is a screen on the 7300 that will give you that information. Um, if you want to get rid of the waterfall, it'll 
replace it, and then you can see that information. I, I don't know, though, uh, if it's really similar to what's on the 7610. Yeah, it's, it's certainly not the same uh, architecture, but similar for, uh, software or firmware. But uh, I will say that uh, uh, the, uh, the, whole, the whole thing I, uh, uh, is designed where the fan uh, is uh, told by the processor when things are getting hot, you change the speed in the fan and so on and so forth. And I have never, ever gotten this thing uh, uh, to go above 70, uh, 70 degrees centigrade, uh, not at all. I um, also read something somewhere. The output transistor on the ICOM is like a like a Darlington inside of it. You know, there's like multiple ones inside of the uh, enclosure, so it looks like a single unit, but there's more than one in it. Yeah, that's right. Yep, you're absolutely right. But I guess uh, Malcolm had uh, repaired many of them, and I know a guy. Uh, well, knew a guy who knew a guy <laughs> up in Sholo or something like that. He kept doing FT8 on this thing, and he was on his third set of finals or whatever, or, you know, third final. Well, what, was he running at uh, full, full power? Didn't he just, you know, I would think that he'd want to go back 75%, you know, at least. So the first one was 100 watts. The second one was, well, I'll just run it at 50 and then uh, he a uh, second time same thing 50 watts well that's that 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 there's something else i don't know i don't, I, don't, I find that hard to believe at 50 watts so that that's really hard to believe but so i guess if the rf gets in there it makes the alc run away and the um if you're not watching the radio it starts to put out excessive amount of power when you set up for FD8, you're not supposed to have any ALC. So I don't, I don't understand why ALC is a factor. Um, I, I guess it's the like the or the bias of the the transistor in the in the the circuit gets affected by RF. I'll have to go and look. I have a, a um an email that was forwarded to me, which was a response from Scott Malcolm as to why the finals failed in that one particular radio, and he was. I, I love that guy. He really is very thorough and, and he gives a lot of information and then you no know, tries to back it up with facts. Yeah, that sounds like a real important guy to have around because uh, I'm at a loss. Unfortunately, he retired and says, I'm not going to work on anything anymore. So uh, there's a. That was one of the, the big ICOM guys that worked at ICOM and, you know, um, and, and continued to do it after working there, but he's, he's done. He won't, he won't take work anymore. Is that the guy back in uh, Michigan? No, he's in like, uh, he's in Washington, kind of outside of uh, Vancouver. Uh, like, I think Toledo or something, you know, it's it's a, it's up near Mount Rainier. Oh, okay. Well, congratulations to his retirement then. Well, he retired, I think, from ICOM and then went to go fix radios for another 20 years after that. Wow. I'm sure Randy probably knows more about it than I do, actually. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Hey, would you do me a favor? I, I don't know. I don't really do favors, but sure. For you, I, I can probably make an exception. All right, turn that processor down. And when you crunch that microphone, it, it's just gratingly terrible to me. I, I don't have a processor. Well, it's got grating sound when you unkey. I don't know, probably my microphone. It's an old radio. Put some uh, three and one oil on that sucker. Yeah, so you say you're not running processing? Nope, don't have one. Is, is that an HC3 cartridge? I'm not on an ICOM. No, no, the cartridge from Heil. Yeah, I'm, I'm not on an ICOM. I'm not, I'm not using a Heil microphone. Okay. I'm on an FT-102. Sounding that terrible. Yeah, I didn't even notice it until you mentioned it. Oh, it's terrible. The grating sound that when he uncased, it goes. I uh, no big deal. Well, there's nothing I can do about it. It's a hand mic that came with the radio. I don't have anything else to run with it. I can run one of these other Yaesu microphones, and they don't really sound that good. 
Yeah, that's, that's the way it sounds like, a normal uh, hand mic. Matter of fact, this radio has a hand mic. I've never had it plugged in. I, I don't even know if it works. Came with the radio. Well, I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Nobody else has said anything about it, so um, it can't be that bad. I'll turn the mic gain down a little bit, see if that uh, cleans it up, because this radio does run a little hot, and maybe I'm just talking too close to it. But, you know, I don't know. I never heard anybody else say anything about it, Randy. No worries. I just asked you to do me a favor, that's all. You know me. I don't care what anybody else says. Okay. Well, I'm going to I mean, if I had the processor on, I, I think this does have a processor. It would sound pretty weird. You could switch the box, you know, and not even squeeze the mic. But the room is too noisy. Well, here's the processor. Can you hear it? It, it actually cuts my power down. Yeah, you gotta raise the gate up a little bit. So with this radio, it puts out 200 watts. So you turn the processor on and then reduce the drive and then you can you know, not cook the crap out of your amplifier. You know what you're probably hearing is you're probably hearing a, 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 a what do they call it, the early stage arthritis in the, in the uh, thumb. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm using a foot switch on the amplifier, and um, maybe there's something to, to be said with the sequence of how I'm keying up. If ICOM would have just fixed my 7300, we wouldn't have this problem. Oh, that sounds, that sounded perfect then. I, I didn't do anything different. Oh, the, the I heard it that time. All right, well, listen, I'm going to pass along my 73. It's been great talking to you guys. I always learn a wealth of information uh, from everyone, so uh, I do appreciate that. And i got to go uh, take the garbage cans out to the curb before I forget because I'm starting to get a little tired. So 73 is the very best of one and all. W-E-6-J-K-N and the garlic capital of the world signing off and clear. See you later, brother. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good night, Kevin. Uh-oh, I just heard something arc and spark. I might have something going on here. Oh, we got only hope. That you'll figure it out. I will when it's burning. Sometimes that's the only time you get to fix it. Okay, can you, can you still hear it now? I just turned the amp off. It's just when you squeeze that microphone, it makes a hell of a wreck. I touched a weenie. If you switch the box, you would not have that sound. But that's okay, brother. No big deal. I touched a weenie. Oh, boy. Yeah, I can't get the box to work, Randy. doesn't want to work on This is a 1982 radio. I touched a weenie. The microphone might not be hot until you squeeze it closed, if you know what I mean. Talk about expressing my daughter's anal gland. Oh, there it goes. But it hangs really long.
Come begin at five. Now we have Jammers. 